السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode in our series of Gardens of the Pious By the grace of Allah, today's episode is number 144 and uh, we'll continue explaining chapter 32 and that is going to be the fourth episode in this chapter insha'Allah Azza wa Jal um, The hadith which we're about to study in this chapter the chapter is known as the superiority of the poor, weak and the unrenowned Muslims The hadith which we're about to study is hadith number 257 in the series Narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب أشعث أغبر مدفوع بالأبواب لو أقسم على الله لأبره رواه مسلم Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said many a person with shaggy and dusty hair with the shivel hair and dusty clothes and driven away from doors because of his poverty and shabby clothes were to swear by Allah that something would happen Allah would certainly make it happen the hadith is collected by Imam Muslim again Many a people or a person with disheveled hair are driven away from the door. But they are so pious that if they are to swear in the name of Allah, Allah would definitely fulfill their oath or the subject of their oath. The word Ash'ath has been mentioned and narrated in many a hadith referring to a person who is either traveling and with disheveled hair Aghbar again means a person has been traveling and he is covered with dust. So Ash'ath <coughs> is referring to the nature of the hair which is disheveled, not taken care of. And Al-Ghabra means the dust that is covering the person. Ash'ath Aghbar. Imagine when you come across a person who is with disheveled hair and he is wearing shaggy clothes and he's all dusty. I understand that nowadays some people uh, actually take this as a fashion. You see some of the youth uh, wearing torn clothes, they pay extra. They pay a few hundreds in order to get a pair of jeans with torn, uh, from, torn from the knees or from the bottom, from here or there. Now I'm talking about a person who's actually poor and cannot afford uh, to buy decent clothes. So he's wearing shaggy clothes the leftover of others. And uh, meanwhile, he's dusty. He doesn't have a place to take a shower or to wash off, to remove the dust with the water because he's very poor. So this condition of being disheveled and dusty with shaggy clothes describes the condition of a person whom people would treat as inferior. A person who's extremely poor Many people would consider such person as weightless, has no capacity in the community. In this chapter also we discussed a similar hadith in which a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, رُبَّ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرَ مَدْفُوعٍ بِالْأَبْوَابِ لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَأَبَرَّ And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked 
uh, one of his companions was sitting uh, with him when a person was very prestigious position, nice uh, clothes, wearing very expensive outfit, passed by. He said, "Ma taqulu fi hada?" What do you guys th- uh, think and say concerning this person? He said, "They said he's such and such person, an honorable person, has a great capacity in the community. Uh, if he were to say anything, people would listen attentively. If you were to intercede, his intercession would be accepted. And if you were to ask for any girl's hand." Her family would be more than happy to give him the daughter in marriage. Then he was followed by another person. The same description that we have in this hadith. Ash'atha Akbar. Normally, laymen would perceive this person as uh, inferior. As a person who has no capacity in the community. Then when the Prophet ﷺ asked them, and what do you think of this person? They said, you know, this is a person very poor. If, if he were to say anything, no one would listen to him. If he even intercedes, no one is going to uh, accept his intercession. He has no capacity. And if he wanted to marry a girl and propose to her, their family would not give him their daughter in marriage because he's very poor. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, لهذا, that poor person whom you guys perceived as inferior, is better than an earth full of the earlier one, whom you thought that he's very prestigious. It is not by the look. Rather, the measurement and what determines the superiority is at taqwa, which means righteousness and piety. <laughs> was surely the most honorable of all of you, the noblest of all of you is the one who has more taqwa, more righteousness, the most pious. In Allah alimun khabir. And the ending is amazing. Verily, Allah is all knowing and well acquainted. Yani, no one knows who is truly more pious than others, other than Him, Al Alim, the all knowing, Al khabir, the well acquainted. So the word rubba, many. There are many cases like that. You, mean you misjudge people because your judgment would be based on the superficial means and symptoms. Uh, he's a doctor. And that's why whenever a doctor is running to be the president of a Muslim community, even in the West, versus a person who's a Quranic teacher or a, a school teacher, they, but he's a doctor. He has a big house. Whenever he would host people, he can throw a nice dinner and a nice party. So people normally judge based on the appearance, based on the superficial means. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing to our attention that look at the the difference. Many uh, people like this person with the shivel hair and uh, shaggy clothes and all dusty all over. لو أقسم على الله لبرا but before that مدفوع بالأبواب uh, people would not be interested in inviting him home or asking him to come in because he is a man of no interest يعني people are not interested in him yet before Allah سبحانه وتعالى Allah the Almighty said إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لو أقسم على الله لا أبر القسم is to take an oath is to say والله or بالله تالله you precede the name or any of the names and attributes of Allah with one of the letters of the oath حروف القسم الوا والتاء والباء so when you say والله you all know that you're not allowed to swear except to Allah or to any of his names من كان حلفا فليحلف بالله أو ليصمت If you are going to swear or say I swear to or take an oath it must be by Allah or any of his names or be quiet لا أبر بر القسم is to fulfill one's oath Who has the power of fulfilling one's oath? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He can say والله forever But whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will take place And if he doesn't will if he doesn't permit this to happen, it's not going to happen. But in this case, because he loves this person so much, and this person happens, meanwhile, 
to appear as of no capacity in the community, an inferior, not renowned person, not known person, but before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a big thing. He's a huge thing. لو أقسم على الله لأبرة Once it says والله O oh Allah I swear to Allah You gotta do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Out of loving this person He loves him so much So that he will fulfill his oath And will make it come true Why? Because he loves him Because this person is righteous Subhanallah Compare the condition of this person To the condition of the other person whom we studied in the previous hadith, in the previous episode. يُؤْتَ بِالرَّجُلِ الْعَظِيمِ السَّمِينِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ A man who looks huge, muscular, physically fit in the dunya. Uh, because of his wealth, because of his position on the day of judgment, لا يزن عند الله جناح بعوضة He would not even have the weight of the wing of a fly on the day of judgment. Is very insignificant. <clears throat> you know what? That means, brothers and sisters, fact number one, it doesn't matter what people think of me or what they say about me as long as what is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great. What really matters is how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at you? Where does he like to see you? إذا أردت أن تعرف عند الله مقامك فانظر حيث أقامك. You really want to know your position with Allah, how much Allah values you, how much Allah loves you, or it is, or is it the opposite? Then right now, what have you been doing? What are you doing currently? Where are you right now? If Allah misses you where you're supposed to be, then He doesn't like you. He doesn't love you. No matter how much you keep saying that I love you, Allah, you're a liar. It's Jumu'ah and you're absent. Why? I'm busy. Because I have a lot of work. I have to finish this before I close my clinic, or my store, or my business, or I call the meeting off. Because we have a priority. Allah doesn't love you. Wallahi. Allah doesn't like you. That's why he let you get sucked in in the dunya, which is nothing. لموضع صوت أحدكم في 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 الجنة خير من الدنيا وما فيها. A very small, tiny little place in paradise, which barely could be occupied by a stick or a whip, in paradise is better than the whole world and what it contains. So if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala always finds you where He likes you to be, this is a sign that you are righteous, and this is a sign that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves you. With regards to the person whom people would word him off and say we're not interested, but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's loved. And he's pious, despite his shaggy clothes and his dusty head and disheveled hair. Do you ever think that this person would say, I swear to Allah to do or not to do anything which is forbidden or Allah dislikes? Obviously not. We're talking about everything on the right track. Versus a person who says, this person appeared to people as righteous. And he had a friend who was a big sinner. And he continuously advised him, repent, quit, uh, stop doing sins, seek forgiveness. And the other person say, yeah, one day, inshallah, pray for me. Until one day, the person who looked righteous saw the other person involved in a big sin he could not take it he said Wallahi abada. by Allah Allah will never forgive you ever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately took the souls of both of them and said Man alla who is he who, how dare you are to say Wallahi Allah will not forgive you not to the extent not to the extent Forgiveness is only in Allah's hand. In Allah's hand. You cannot say uh, in, this, in a way of distributing Allah's mercy that this person is forgiven and that person will go to hell. And that I don't know what's going to happen to me and to you. The Prophet said, So again, another beautiful prophetic uh, hadith that teaches us 
that to humble ourselves and to worry much about our relationship with our Creator. This is the most important thing. That hadith could reflect on our dealing with others. Whenever a man, and I have many uh, questions in this regard, says, um, I live in Europe with my parents, so this, this way I'm going to answer several questions all together at once for boys and girls. And my father says, you know, when you grow your beard, you look like ISIS. And my family members started picking on me and say, ISIS, ISIS. And the girl, when I decided to wear hijab, my parents are uh, against me. And they're attacking me. They're calling me names, extremist, uh, a walking tent, and all of that. I'm talking about the parents. Look at the test and the trial. You know when this happens from non-Muslims? Because of the stereotyping, because of watching what uh, the, the hate mongers all over the Western media, you know, you may give them a benefit of doubt, but the parents, the parents, the closest to you, happen to be your enemies. Why? They want you to be wicked. They want you not to pray. They want the girl not to wear hijab. They want the boy, they want the boy to stop praying in the masjid, go into the center and shave his beard and look like everybody else. And I know some parents that once a teenage boy started practicing and grew a beard. And his father was very harsh on him. He beat him badly so that he could shave his beard. Not only that, he had some friends with the, uh, you know, intelligence and with the police. So he turned them to them so that they can beat him and torture him in order to make him shave his beard. Subhanallah, he achieved his goal. And he made his son shave his beard. He made him quit the prayer. And I met that boy one day when he was wearing a necklace, big necklace. And he has become an entirely different person. You see him like a shaitan. And he went astray. And ever since the father was tested with a list of calamities. But the boy was not dutiful to the father anymore. خلاص. And the father suffered until he died with a series of chronic diseases he suffered big time subhanallah imagine why to lose your dunya and your akhirah for what build up a relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what matters most I say to many of the parents who think that their children are maybe too much into religious practices say hey, you should bow down in frustration thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah saved you and your children when you have three or four children and one of them is practicing and the others are not when you die the practicing person is the only one who will continue to pray for you and his prayer will be accepted you know why because he's the only one who prays others do not they are either, either in drugs or drinking or you know, they get married to people like them, and they take a different path. You did not leave any good fingerprint on them. You misled them. And Allah the Almighty says in Surah At-Tahreem, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ And number six of Surah At-Tahreem, this is very serious. To me, brothers and sisters, I learned from this hadith many lessons. It doesn't matter what people say about me if I'm doing my best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they say this person is crazy, he was a bank manager, then all of a sudden he quit. Why? Because some crazy people told him that it's haram to work in a conventional bank. Yeah, you think that we're crazy. Okay. Guess what? Well, this is the same name that they call Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They called him majnoon. They called him insane. They called him out of his mind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended him in the Quran in Surah Al-Qalam. مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةَ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ By the grace of your Lord, you're not majnoon. You're not insane. So don't feel sad if you're called names because the Prophet sallallahu himself was called names. And similarly, all the prophets before him. مَا يُقَالُ لَكَ إِلَّا مَا قَدِ قِيلَ لِلْرُسُولِ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Whatever is then said to you, O Muhammad, have been said to all the prophets 
before you, then be patient. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what matters most. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to begin another hadith. It's going to be the last in this uh, chapter, chapter number 32, the superiority of weak and uh, renowned Muslims. And it's such a long hadith. So I've been thinking about it. It's a very interesting story that the Prophet ﷺ narrated to us. He says, I'm going to share with you the meaning of the hadith because it's kind of long for the sake of time. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لم يتكلم في المهد إلا ثلاثة. <coughs> None spoke in the cradle except three. So we have three cases. Three babies were able to speak in the cradle by the leave of their Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there must be a reason there must be a reason why the three cases were able to speak in the cradle it's a miracle isn't it yes of course you know when your son is two years old and uh, approached the age of weaning you start teaching them a few letters to repeat after you then two, two and a half, three years, we celebrate when he starts saying, Baba, Mama, Dad, Mom, Uncle, Brothers, Sisters, you know, a few words. We're talking about a child a few days old, newborn, and being able to speak, and not just speak, speak fluently, and speaking the words of wisdom. So there are three cases like that throughout history. The Prophet ﷺ told us about them. Obviously, all of you know who's the first case. Isa ibn Maryam alayhim salam Jesus, the son of Mary, may peace be upon him and his mother. And Isa alayhi salam is ayah min ayatillah. Is one of Allah's signs in this universe. How could Jesus be one of Allah's signs? Simply because Allah the Almighty said <coughs> in Surah Al-Imran, In مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون. Ayah number 59 of Surah Al-Imran. The likeness of Jesus is the same. Like Adam alayhim as salam, peace be upon them both. He created Adam from turab, from dust. Then he said to him, Kun, fayakun, be. And he was indeed a living human being. So, what is the similarity between Adam and Jesus, peace be upon him? And the lifespan and the time between both is simply thousands and thousands of years. The likeness is that both all are Allah's creations. Allah created Adam and Allah created Isa. So Isa is not the son of God, nor is he God himself. Not only that, the origin is from teen, from turab, from dust, from clay, min turabin. ثم قال له كن فيكون. And this is what is in common between the miraculous nature of the creation of Adam and the miraculous nature of the creation of Isa السلام, or his birth. In the case of Adam, Allah created him solely from turab, from dust. In another ayah, from salsalim min hama'im masnoon, from sound clay. In another ayah, min teen, from mud. All are the same. Turab, you add water to it, it becomes uh, clay. Then whenever it is hardened, it becomes salsalim min hama'in masnoon. Then after he shaped him by his hands, he breathed the soul into him and he said, kun, be a living human being. And subhanallah, immediately Adam السلام, became a living human being, the very, very first human being. We all agree to that, Jews, Muslims, Christians, you know, and many others. We believe Adam was created this way. Who created him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his creation and his existence was of a miraculous nature. Yes, because with no parents, a human being, flesh, bones and blood, nerves, arteries and veins, all of that was created from teen. 
Okay, then from Adam alayhi salam, there was another miracle where he created Hawa. And the creation of Hawa is another amazing miracle because Eve, peace be upon her, was created from Adam, from his rib. So Adam's creation was parentsless, with no parents. And in the case of Hawa, Eve, she is motherless. She was not conceived in the womb of no one. She did not spend even a few months in the womb of no woman. There was no woman before her. She is the very first woman. Isn't this a miracle? Yes, of course. How could a human be, be born without having a mother? Okay. Then from Adam and Eve is spread. فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ ثُمَّ إِذَا أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ تَنْتَشِرُونَ Many human beings spread all over the earth. Right? This is in Surah Al-Rum. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ Amongst his signs that he created you from dust, then afterward your bashar, human beings, تَنْتَشِرُونَ All over. Spreading all over the earth. Okay. Then... Allah the Almighty created Jesus, peace be upon him, fatherless from a mother without being with a man ever, any human being whatsoever. And this is a miracle, isn't it? It is a miracle. Okay, some people went astray because they could not accept the miraculous nature of the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him. They said, how come? Okay, let me ask a question. Which one is more strange? more amazing a human being being created without a mother motherless or a human being being created without a father fatherless I, I personally think it is the earlier one so why didn't you consider the creation of Eve more strange than the creation of, uh, of uh, Jesus peace be upon him and why did you end up worshipping Jesus not Eve not Adam Peace be upon them. إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمَ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Because of this miraculous nature, Mary, Maryam, عليها السلام, the chess woman, was so scared when Jibreel, عليها السلام, told her that Allah is giving you a bishara, a glad tiding, that you will have a child, and all of that. And she said, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? How could I tell people that I have a child? She said in Surah Maryam in Ayah number 23, I wish I have died before that. I wish I was forgotten. I wish I, I, wish I was just history. No one would even remember me. How am I supposed to face people presenting a child, say this is my child, but I'm chaste. I'm modest. I've never been with them. And they say, you're a liar. They're not going to say you're crazy. They say, gonna, you're a liar. So she went through a series of miracles, such as creating the uh, stream to run beneath her. And when he ordered her to shake the dead trunk of the palm tree, which dropped ripe dates upon her so that she can eat. Then when she gave birth and she carried the baby and her people saw her in this condition, you've committed an act of adultery. What is this? She did not say a word. Rather, she pointed out to him. Ask him. Are you out of your mind? How could we speak to someone who's a newborn in the cradle. At that, she didn't have to say a word after word. Rather, it was Isa's turn, Jesus, the son of Mary. The first case to speak in the cradle, he said, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا 
والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا Seven sentences. This is it. These are the words which Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, peace be upon him, spoke in the card. He presented the whole story from beginning to end in seven phrases. أنا عبد الله. I'm Allah's servant. آتاني الكتاب. Consider what will happen. He will give me the book, the gospel, and he will appoint me as a prophet. And he made me a blessed. And he enjoined upon me to pray, to give zakah as long as I live. And to be dutiful to whom? Look at it. And number 32. And to be dutiful to my mother because he did not have a father to begin with. ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا and he did not make me wicked and rich والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا beautiful آيات this is what Isa عليه السلام spoke in the cradle to be continued إن شاء الله after a short break stay tuned رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. O oh Allah, to you belongs all praise. You are the light of the heavens and the earth and all that is within them. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا عَنْهَا لَا تُفَتَّحْ لَا تُفَتَّحْ لَهُمْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ وَلَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياف. Sister Amina is asking, is it true that you can see Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in the dream? The answer is yes. Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم in an authentic hadith, he said, من رآني في المنام فقد رآني فإن الشيطان لا يتمثل به. After the soul departs the body, it makes its journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it was righteous soul, it will be given permission to enter into the heavens. But if the soul was wicked, no. Whosoever associates someone in worship with Allah, even if it is me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Jannah haram and lawful for that person. Rasulallah, Habib Allah, Rasulallah, Habib Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. As you all know that this is a live edition of your program Guardians of the Pious. So our phone numbers and contact information should appear on the screen. And as a quick reminder, the phone numbers beginning with area code 002-011-246-4583. Alternatively, 011-250-08679. And the email address is gardens at huda.tv. So, briefly we spoke about the first case, the case of Isa السلام, Jesus the son of Mary who spoke in the cradle and we learn about the seven sentences which he said and spoke in the cradle once he was newborn which summarized the whole mission from birth uh, to elevation to afterward what will happen insha'Allah after he descends back by the end of time. 
the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith لم يتكلم في المهد إلا ثلاثة none spoke in the cradle but three so that is the first case what about the second case he said صاحب جريج what is صاحب جريج the companion of جريج جريج was a worshipper راهب who isolated himself from public lived in isolation in a temple to worship Allah and he was a very pious person the Prophet said that one day while he was praying his mother came up to him and she said oh Juraj he was in the middle of the prayer and he said oh my Lord my mother is calling me shall I answer her Shall I continue praying? Shall I answer her? Then he continued praying. But the mother called upon him again. Oh, Juraj! He repeated the question to himself in the prayer. Then he neglected her call. Three times. And he preferred to continue the prayer. She was angry with him because she called upon him and he wouldn't answer her. So she said, Oh Allah! Do not let him die until he sees the faces of the prostitutes. Wow! What a very bad prayer. She asked Allah that may her son be tested in his faith with the test of temptation, sexual temptations. Why? Because she was very angry with him. Before we continue with what happened afterward, we want to learn what is the Islamic rules and regulations concerning a person who's in the prayer and he's been called upon, particularly by one of his parents? As you know that obeying the parents or one of them is a must, as long as their command do not contradict any of the commands of Allah. And they do not ask you to do any disobedience. But what if they call upon you while you are praying? What should you do? We have to differentiate between Two conditions, the voluntary prayer and the mandatory prayer. In the case of the fard prayer, one is not allowed to leave the prayer under any circumstances except whenever it's a matter of saving lives, life or death. Seeing somebody is about to get hit by a car, a child climbed the fence and was about to fall down, a baby is going crawling through the stairs, is going to fall down stairs, so it's a matter of saving lives. You leave the prayer to save this person's life, even if it is fard. But now we're talking about the nafl, the voluntary prayers. With regards to the supererogatory prayers, we will also have to differentiate between if the parents know what is going on. But you know, some parents are pious and they know that my son is praying. And right away, if the mother calls upon, oh, Ahmed, and if he doesn't answer, she says, oh, he must be praying. Give him five minutes. You know, because she knows it's a prayer time. Maybe he's praying to Hajjud, whatever. But there are some parents who do not know the significance of the prayer. So they keep calling. She needs some medication. She needs some water. And when she calls a few times and he doesn't answer, and mashallah, now sincerity is up to the utmost. And he's reciting Surah Al-Baqarah in the first rak'ah and Ali Imran in the second rak'ah. No, we say in this case, if the mother, if the father is capable to see you, you're allowed to motion or point with your hand like I'm praying. Or say Subhanallah out loud so that they could hear you. Or Alhamdulillah, any of the afkar which are prescribed in the salah. You may even raise your voice if you're reciting an ayah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Oh, he's praying. He's doing his namaz. He's offering his prayer. Okay. What if they don't know any of that and it really requires you to answer them? You may leave the voluntary prayer for this case. Because it's voluntary. Nafila versus the fard. So, Juraj, while praying Nafila, ignored the call of his mother once, twice, and three times. So she got very angry with him, and she made this terrible dua. <coughs> she thought she's going to punish him because that he was so much sucked in into worship and ibadah, 
So she said, oh Allah, test him. Make him not die until he sees the beauty of the faces of the prostitutes. Very complicated dua, why? You know, when you see the face of a woman, an ordinary woman, a pretty woman, but she is modest and you're modest. So she lowers her gaze and you lower your gaze, that's it. It will dissolve automatically. But uh, a woman whose main business is to seduce people and to trap men, she is, you know, she is professional in that field. So she prayed that may Allah test him with a woman like that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Reem from the KSA, welcome to the program. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Go ahead, sister, please. Uh, sir, how are you? Fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Sir, actually, my question is that my teacher says that women in menses can do wadu and were girls and can touch Quran. She says that we have asked big sheikhs and they say that it's true. Sir, I would like to know your opinion. Tayyip, barakallahu feek. Women in their menses and men during their janaba and women likewise are not allowed to touch the Quran with their hands even if they have wudu because there is a state of major impurity. لا يمسه إلا المطهرون even if you perform wudu. So this is something you can say general consensus with regards to touching the Quran with their hands during the state of major impurity. Now with regards to the recitation of the Qur'an itself, like by memory, from a smart device, a tablet, a smartphone, there is a difference of opinion which I presented repeatedly. So if your teacher says that in order, <coughs> excuse me, in order to revise whatever you memorized, it is permissible, that is permissible. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah adopted this view as well. A Quranic teacher, a student who studies Quran, a woman who memorizes Quran and she needs to revise on a regular basis, are allowed to read the Quran by heart or if they touch the Quran through a barrier, like if you're wearing gloves, in order to maintain your homework with regards to memorizing or revising what you memorize of the Quran, even during the menses. Okay? Barakallahu feekum. So the Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from Nigeria, welcome to the program. For the sake of Allah. Sister Aisha. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Sheikh. Sheikh, I just called to say I love you for the sake of Allah. Ah, Jazakallah khairan, Sister Aisha. May Allah, the one whom you loved us for his sake, love you as well. May Allah bless you and your family. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. Thank, Thank you. <coughs> so the one has to be very careful when dealing with the parents because it's a very sharp weapon. Do not mess with it. Rather, learn how to use it. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, among the dua, the prayers which will never be rejected, da'watul walidi li walada. Excuse me. The prayer of the parent to his or to her child. Man, you don't know what you're missing. If you have any of your parents are still alive or both of them, before leaving home, say, mom, dad, pray for me. Their prayer will make your day. And when you come back, begin with them. Pray for me. Try to please them, especially. Whenever any of them, or both of them, if they both are alive, living with you, don't say anything that may offend them to the point that the word of, which is not even a word, it's an expression that you're offended, it's haram to say it, forbidden. Rather, say a noble word to them. Be very patient, be very sensitive, because they are very sensitive during this time of their age. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, she did pray against her son, and her son 
is a very righteous man. But the dua was answered. And he was tested big time. There was a prostitute from the children of Israel. So she said, I can lure him for you if you want to. I can seduce him. And she went and she presented herself and she was extremely beautiful. She presented herself to him. But he ran back to his temple and he shut the door behind him and he did not want to do anything with her. But there used to be a shepherd who used to look after the sheep. Then he would spend the night in the temple of Juraj al-Abid, the worshiper. So she let him have sexual relations with her. He impregnated her. When she conceived and she gave birth, she delivered the baby and she went in public and she said, this is Juraj's son. He committed adultery with me and this is his son. So people say, a traitor, a liar, such and such. And they rushed to his temple, to his hut, and they demolished it and they started beating him. <clears throat> he asked for one thing, to see the baby. To see the baby. While everybody was watching and they brought the baby, so he left the baby in his stomach. He poked him or he kicked him with his finger in his stomach and said, Ya Ghulam, O oh boy, who's your father? So the boy, the baby boy who was just born, said, My father is such and such, the shepherd. <gasps> Everybody was shocked. How could a baby boy, a, a newborn, speak out and say, Who's my father? So they kissed his head and they apologized to Juraj and they offered him to rebuild his temple with pure gold. Bricks made of pure gold. He said, no, I'm not interested. Rather, just rebuild it as it used to be, from mud, from tree, which they did. So this is the second case. And it teaches us, hey, you got to be very careful. You may be very pious and righteous, but if you do anything that may upset your parents or any form, it can ruin your future. It can ruin all your deeds. So you got to be careful. The second is how the righteousness of the person would benefit him at the times of need. صَنَائِعُ الْمَعْرُوفِ تَقِي مَصَارِعَ السُّوءِ اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ يَحْفَظُكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this baby speak in the cradle to save Juraj. Juraj was not a sinner. And what he did, he was confused whether should he answer his mother or continue his prayer. And there comes the importance of learning. Big difference between a worshiper and a alim. Priority is to learn so that he can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. What Shafi'i says, to learn one mas'ala or one ayah is better than praying a thousand rak'ah at night. The superiority of a scholar over a worshiper is similar to the superiority of the moon over the, the rest of the, star, the stars and the galaxies. What about the third case because we're running out of time? The third case is of a woman. We don't know the name of this woman. We don't know the name of her baby. But it's a case that the Prophet Sallallahu shared with us. It's a woman who is breastfeeding her baby. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, the woman who's sitting, she saw a man riding on a very nice ride and dressed up in a very fancy clothes. He seemed a very rich person. People are greeting him. And magnifying him. And she said, oh my God, make my baby like him. Make my baby like him. The baby turned around to the mother and said, oh God, do not make me like him. He spoke in the cradle and said, oh Allah, do not answer her dua. Do not make me like him. Then again, she passed by a woman. They were beating her. And calling her names. They accused her that she's an adulteress. And she was saying, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. The woman was being beaten. She kept saying, My Lord, Allah is sufficient for me and He is the best disposer of all affairs. So she said, Oh Allah, do not make my son to be like her. So the baby in the cradle started saying, Oh Allah, make me like her. 
mother was very surprised. And they talked to each other. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, they talked to each other. She said, why did you say to the nice man whom I wanted Allah to make you like him? You said, no, do not make me like him. And you said in the other case to the woman who was an adulteress and she was a liar and she was beaten up and everybody was humiliating her. She said, when I prayed, may Allah save you and not make you like her. You said, oh Allah, make me like her. Why? He said, mother, the first man is cruel. The first man is a wild, is awful person, is a wicked person. You have been deceived by his look, but he's a wicked person. Allah doesn't like him, and I don't want to be like him. So what about the woman? She was being punished because she's an adulteress. He said, no, she's not, mom. She's an innocent woman. And she's been saying, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. So I wanted to be as innocent as her. Look, not only that he was able to speak in the cradle. No, he was able to speak the words of wisdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed this baby with information that all the adults around him have no clue about. This whole hadith, brothers and sisters, Al-Imam Al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, and it's a sound hadith. Collected this, it's a hadith that is agreed upon its authenticity. Al-Imam Al-Nawawi listed this hadith in the chapter, and it was the last hadith in the chapter because of this last segment. Do not be deceived by the look. You know, people who may appear very honorable, very prestigious, but be between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no relationship, they are wicked. Do not wish to be like them. Rather wish to be like the believers, the humble ones, even if they are perceived in the community as inferior, as long as they are before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior. And number uh, 13 of Surah Al-Hujurat, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ Most surely the noblest of all of you are the most righteous. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing, well acquainted. By that, we come to the end of today's edition of your program, Gardens of the Pious. And until next time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And only glory to him. He only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. Allah our God is the greatest. The one and only glory to him. He only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So why did they know that? Forgetting all about an in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price